In the month of July 2010, a crime so despicable and heinous took place in Cardiff, the capital city of Wales. This is the story of Sarah Eag, who murdered her son Yasin and then lit his body on fire. But a quick disclaimer before I continue. She hit continuously because he could not memorize the Quran. I'm a Muslim. I pray to God every day. I'm not the most religious person, but I went through a very similar process as a child. All Muslim males go through the same process. I'm talking about the Quran memorization, not the beatings. But I did get some beatings also and I'll come on to that in a bit. I'll explain this detail in the fullest extent with the cultural norms, the religious norms and what actually happened. So if you do end up liking this video, please subscribe. And also I do have two other crime channels. All the links are in the description. Now Yasin was around seven years old and his parents had a desire for him to learn the Quran and become what's known a Hafiz. See in Islam, a Hafiz is just someone who knows how to recite the Quran off by heart. They don't need the book, they know it fully. And by learning all of this, and it takes about two years to learn it fully if you study it properly, you're given like a title, Hafiz, as a way of just honoring your uh, uh, devout nature, so to speak. Like I can't think of a Christian or a Judaic equivalence, but just imagine someone who could read out the Bible to you off by heart without needing the book. It's just a title given to someone for their good work. But keep in mind, all Muslim parents want this for their kids. I, my son, my dad, my granddad, when they were all kids, they all went to the mosque or they learned some form of the Quran and the parents always hoped that they would learn it all fully and off by heart. So this is not a bad thing. What I'm telling you at this point is not a bad thing. It's just uh, uh, parents hoping the best for their children. Like when I was young, I got sent to the mosque and they would teach us the Arabic and how to read the Quran. We were never taught what any of it means, right? But we were taught how to read it. And if we messed about, then the Imam or the priest would beat us with a stick, right? Just a little tap. And I know it's wrong, but that's how it was back in the day. I don't think you get that anymore. But first, why was this so important? Why was it so important to the parents that he learned the Quran? As I said, my parents and all my friends, their parents wanted it. But when we weren't that inclined, they never really cared. So why did it mean so much to this particular set of parents? And I tell you why. It's because then they can go and tell their friends, Oh, look at our son, the Hafiz. Look at our son, the nice religious boy. Look at our son, look how good he is. The entire motivation was vanity. Consider it a sense of pride that would give you an upper standing in your local community, which I've spoken about many times before and I don't know why people put such a big emphasis on what other people think. It's so stupid. Now Sara, the mother, was said to have treated her son Yasin like a dog. She beat him repeatedly with a stick, rolling pin and slipper for failing to memorize the Quran quick enough. She had beaten him so many times that sometimes he found it difficult to write and sit down. The beatings, often with a wooden pestle, became so bad that the day he died, he was suffering from severe abdominal injuries. Now, as this story went to trial, um, the local child protection agencies or whoever, they looked at the case and they released a report. Now, in the report, it says that all of this started in 2003 when the local authorities received quite a few domestic violence complaints. In 2007, there were further reports of domestic violence, but nothing was done further. So the way it works in England, I believe, is you log a report, they then look at it, and if they find it concerning, they'll send a referral, like they'll send a, uh, you know, someone to go to the property to investigate. And given the fact that it took them so long for this referral, someone eventually did try and go to the house, but when they did, the family was away on vacation. Now the police and the children's services tried to follow up with the mother once she got back, but she said, well, the situation is now resolved, we don't need your help. This review also said that when Yasin was in school, a lot of the teachers were concerned for his well-being because they could see he was suffering from many injuries. Now the bright seven-year-old died in July 2010 from internal injuries caused by three months of punishing beatings from his own mother. So it seemed throughout his life his mother beat him, but the particular last three months was the most severe of them all. Now, during the trial, the police played her interrogation interview to which she confessed to everything. The jury listened in silence when the mother explained that the day he died, he collapsed and he was still murmuring words of the Quran. 
She explained that she went to get a barbecue gel when she decided to burn his body and she told police she did it because she was too nervous on what was going to happen. The whole reason she burnt the body was to, was to then hide the body. This police interview also detailed how leading up to his death, Yasin was in such severe pain that whenever he went to school he couldn't sit. But more specifically to the day he died, in the interview she says that she began undressing him, Yasin collapsed and soiled himself. She then dragged him to the kitchen and fed him milk. The child was left naked on the floor and he was still reciting the Quran as she was making him milk. He was able to just take a few sips before his mother dragged him to his bedroom and told him to get dressed. But he couldn't do it, he was in too much pain. So his mother dressed him and then she left him on a rug by his bed. She then believed he fell asleep. 10 minutes later, she returned. She sees him on the floor shivering and shaking and then he takes his final breath she said a greenish yellow liquid ran from his nose then he died that's when she decided to burn the body she runs downstairs to get barbecue gel lighter fluid then she starts to say a bunch of shit which pissed me off even more in this sickening story that already had like 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 adrenaline inside of me she told the police the typical bullshit you hear from the South Asian community. Let me explain. She said that the stick that she used to beat him, there was some kind of devil inside it and I couldn't help myself. She said that she was unable to stop beating her son so she kept praying to God to help her. She also said she was hearing voices from the devil uh, telling her, you know, go beat your son, bad spirits, evil eye and all this crap that people use to mask up their own fuck ups. In fact, she even accused her husband Yusuf during the trial that he did it. So she made the confession. Then in the trial, she said the confession wasn't real. I was lying. I wasn't telling the truth. She blamed her husband. But the police were like, no, you did this. We know the husband didn't. And then eventually on January the 7th, 2013, she was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 17 years. That means that five years from now, right, in 2028, she's eligible for parole. This woman should never be released ever again because she's stupid, she's a phony, and she's a fucking moron. And let's have it right, this is not a religious case, this is not a religious story. Religion just seems to have an element in there. That's what she tried to force upon her child, but it wasn't because it was her religious duty. She did it because she wanted to look good in the face of other people. So my conclusion on this case is just imagine that when you're seven years old, you're in school, you can barely talk. People are probably making fun of you because you're always in pain and you can't sit. You know what kids are like, right? He goes home. Imagine knowing you're at school and then you have to go home to that mother. And why she did? Why did she do it? All because of what other people may think of her. Ooh, look at your son, the nice religious boy, all while beating the shit out of him. This woman should never be released. This is not a religious story. Religious is just part of it. It's a dynamic of it, but it's nothing to do with religion. But when she then tries to get herself out of it by saying, oh, some evil spirits made me do it, which she only did, again, to make herself feel better. Oh, it wasn't me. It was the evil eye. It wasn't me. It was other people wishing bad upon me. It wasn't me. It was the devil. Bitch, fuck you. I'm completely lost for words. I have no idea. Why don't you guys comment? Tell me what you think.